When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Israelites, we are moving along in the spirit realm and spiritual warfare series. Anything that you don't understand, ask the Father in prayer and wait for him to respond. This series is extremely important because a lot of our people are being destroyed and they need help getting out of the evil covenants they establish in religion as well as evil covenants they establish while they lack knowledge. Spiritual warfare is not for the weak-minded. You must be spiritually mature to stand against the evil powers of this world and other realms. So far, you know that the spirit realm is a parallel world to the earth. Your dreams reveal what is happening in the spirit realm. The spirit realm reveal what the eyes of the flesh cannot see in the physical realm. Everything you see in the spirit realm are important. Every symbol has a meaning in the spirit realm. You learn that the Most High communicate with his people in the spirit realm. The book of Job confirmed that the Most High interact with us and give us instructions while we sleep. The Most High transfer the everlasting covenant to Jacob in the spirit realm. The book of Genesis reveal how the Most High appeared to Jacob in the spirit realm to establish the everlasting covenant. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place, and tarried there all night, because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place, and put them for his pillows, and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee, and in thy seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again to this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Our father Jacob, the progenitor of the Israelite bloodline, didn't wait for his grandfather Abraham and father Isaac to confirm the covenant the Most High established with him in the spirit realm, nor did Jacob follow the popular doctrines during his time. Certainly, Jacob did not serve idols. Jacob had a personal relationship with the father. During that time, no Messiah stood in the way of Jacob and the Most High, the father. The Most High spoke with Jacob in the spirit realm and revealed to him that he was the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac. The Most High didn't say he was the God to the world, despite all the other nations living at that time. He made it known to Jacob that he was the God of his grandfather Abraham and father Isaac. The Most High went on to say to Jacob that the land where he is currently in, to him will he give the land and to his seed after him. The Most High went on to make many other promises to Jacob. The Most High said to Jacob in the spirit realm, he will be with him and he will not leave him until he fulfill everything that he promised him. And behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest 
and will bring thee again to this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Every Israelite with an eye can see that the Most High transferred the everlasting covenant to Jacob in the spirit realm. There's no document signed between the Most High and Jacob, nor was there any proof given to Jacob by the Most High to share with his children that the Most High gave him the land of Canaan for a possession. How come the Israelites in this generation and previous generations don't question Jacob for the covenant the Most High made with him in the spirit realm? How come no one asked Jacob for proof of the promises and inheritance given to him by the Most High? Most Israelites use these scriptures as evidence that the Most High gave the Israelites the land of Canaan for a possession. How come when the Most High is communicating with his people in this generation via the spirit realm and giving them instructions concerning our people in this generation... Some Israelites are ready to slander, gossip, and stone that person for revealing, thus says the Most High. The scriptures made it very clear that the Most High doesn't change. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. The Most High is communicating with his people today the same way he did with the prophets of old and from the beginning. The Most High doesn't change. A lot of Israelites tend to follow what is popular with this world. The scriptures made it clear that what is popular with the world is an abomination to the Most High. Also, for some Israelites, Rome is the standard. Therefore, if what the Most High is revealing in this generation doesn't correspond with Rome, many Israelites find it difficult to accept. This is why I repeatedly say to the Israelites to ask the Most High for a double portion of the spirit of discernment. A lot of you dismiss truth that can save your life. So many want to stay on the broad road. You will perish on the popular broad road that leads to destruction. The time has come for you to understand spirit. When the scripture said in the book of John that the father is looking for his people to serve him in the spirit and in truth. What do you believe spirit means? Spirit will never agree with flesh. Rome and its doctrines is flesh. The flesh does what is contrary to the spirit. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. The scripture said, a wicked and adulterous generation looks for a sign. The scripture went on to say, no sign will be given except the sign of the prophet Jonah. Israelites, the time has come for you to utilize the Holy Spirit that lives in you. The Holy Spirit will confirm the word. The Holy Spirit will reveal the truth. The doctrines of Rome will not reveal truth to you. Everything religion taught you are lies. From the rapture and to the God they serve are lies. When I expose the imposters that stole our heritage, YouTube censor my videos. However, when I expose Rome, the censorship on this channel increased significantly. To the point where the mother harlot have many of my videos deleted. The head leaders of the synagogue of Satan know that the truth being revealed on this channel will deliver a lot of people that are tied to their evil altars. They respond quickly while Israelites are fighting to stay in bondage. Some Israelites who supposedly awaken from their slumber are fighting to serve the gods of the heathens and Messiah. Wake up, Israelites. If what I'm saying to you was false, the workers of iniquity would promote my videos. Because it's truth and they know the truth shall make you free, they bury the videos. Censorship is a form of spiritual warfare. Israelites, you must graduate to eating solid food while you still can. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. But hitherto, you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are ye able. Only a few will hear the voice of the Most High and return to the Father, which is why the road to everlasting life with the Most High is narrow. Israelites, our father Jacob did something that was extremely important when he woke up from his sleep. Jacob didn't ignore his dream. Jacob did what many Israelites in this generation need to make a habit of, accepting the covenant or canceling the covenant. Israelites, it is extremely important that you accept the covenant or cancel the covenant the moment you wake up. When Jacob awake from his sleep, 
he accepted the covenant by making a vow to the Most High. When he made the vow, he accepted and established the covenant with the Father. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me, and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat, and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set up for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Jacob didn't alert the world about the covenant he made with the father. Jacob being the man that he was, he let his words be a few. He simply said, if you will do what you said, then you will be my God. Jacob went on to say to the father, if you do these things, here is what I will do. Jacob said, everything that you will give me, I will give back to you a tenth of everything. A lot of Israelites make empty promises to the father if he would deliver them from their troubles. The moment the father deliver you from your hardship, you break the vows you made to the father. A lot of you are being destroyed because of those vain promises you made to the father. The scripture said it's better that you don't make a vow to the father if you're not going to fulfill them. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is it that thou shouldst not vow and that thou shouldst vow and not pay. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin, neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thine hands? Israelites, let your words be a few. I speak a lot on breaking evil covenants the moment you wake up from your sleep. When it comes to positive covenants, you have to accept them. When you accept, that is how you establish the covenant with the Most High. Did you notice Jacob's verbiage when accepting the covenant? Jacob said, if you will do as you say and be with me, then you will be my God. A lot of us don't know when we have good dreams. Most people assume every covenant made in the spirit realm are bad. Remember, the Most High speak with you in the spirit realm and give you instructions in the spirit realm. Therefore, some of the covenants established in the spirit realm are good. Because many people lack knowledge about the spirit realm, they delay the good work the Most High wants to do through them. The way I accept covenants and cancel covenants, I remind the Most High of His words. Sometimes I use the scripture in the book of Jeremiah that said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. The scripture said they are thoughts of peace and to give an expected end. The scripture went on to say, you will call upon me and pray to me and I will listen to you. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Sometimes I say to the Father, if what I saw is of you and correspond with the thoughts you think towards me, I accept what you want to do through me. If they are not of you, I reject and cancel any evil covenants forged knowingly and unknowingly. This is enough to establish or cancel any evil covenants. Let your words be a few. Israelites, I hope you're beginning to comprehend why the scriptures say death and life is in the power of the tongue as well as the people of the Most High perish for a lack of knowledge. The beast religion keep the people of the Most High ignorant to wisdom that could have delivered them a long time ago. Because the beast system is ruled by principalities and dark powers, as well as the spiritual wickedness in high places, the workers of iniquity the Israelites are enslaved to don't want their slaves to become free. That is why they made it their life goal to keep you ignorant about the Father. All the heathen nations conspired against you. The longer you sin, the longer they get to rule over you. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. But they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarenes 
Gabal, and Amman, and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. Assur also is joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot, Selah. Israelites, the Most High will reveal a lot of information to you in the spirit realm. Don't let anyone rob you of the knowledge and wisdom given to you in the spirit realm. The Satans know that a lot of people don't know about the spirit realm and how everything operates there. Religion doesn't teach about the spirit realm. There's a few Protestant churches that focus on spiritual warfare. However, most of the time, the leaders of those churches are high level witches and warlocks. Majority of the pagan church don't teach the people about spiritual warfare. Because of this, many are perishing from a lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Israelites, not knowing is not an excuse with the Most High. Make sure to increase your knowledge while the word of the Most High is available. Don't wait until the word becomes scarce. The scriptures say there will be a famine of the word. Make sure your spirit is well nourished with the word to overcome the dark powers of this world as well as the spirit realm. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east, they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. Israelites, the reason I tell you not to let anyone rob you of the knowledge and instructions given to you by the Most High in the spirit realm, many who lack knowledge will attack you for what is revealed to you and your adversaries will attack you to discourage you from revealing the truth. The Satans, as well as the high level workers of iniquity, will come to deceive you in the spirit realm as well as in the physical realm. The scriptures inform us that a thief comes only to steal, kill and destroy. I've never known thieves befriending their victims genuinely. A lot of Israelites believe the laws and the beast system will do right by them. How many generations of indigenous black people being destroyed by the beast culture for this generation to realize that they live among their enemies? The workers of iniquity who run this world with the Satans will never do right by you. Listen to the scriptures when they say a thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. How did the indigenous black people lose their land, identity, and legacy throughout history? The thieves disguised themselves as peacekeepers in religious nonprofit organizations bearing gifts. Once they deceived the indigenous black people by making them believe they are allies, they stole their land, identity, and everything you had through colonization. Unclean spirits only come to steal, kill, and destroy in the spirit realm. The parable of the sower is a very good example of how the Satans and all your adversaries come to rob you of the word and instructions given to you from the Most High in the spirit realm, as well as the physical realm. Israelites, you know that the Most High will pour out his spirit on his sons and daughters in the last days. Don't let the good wisdom given to you fall by the wayside unto thorns and stony grounds. Make sure the truth and knowledge given to you fall unto good grounds to bring good fruits for the remnant in this generation. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received a seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that received a seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. But he that received seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. 
When the Most High give you instructions from the spirit realm, the Satans will send many doubters and self-righteous people to be a stumbling block to you. Israelites recognize the spirit operating in them and respond accordingly. When the Most High begins to pour out his spirit on his sons and daughters, the Satans will send unclean spirits to torment you, pagans with outrageous belief to confuse you, and self-righteous people from all walks of life to persecute and to discourage you from completing the will of the Father in your life. Israelites, you must put on the whole armor of the Most High to stand against the attacks. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Many indigenous black people cannot recognize a spiritual attack against them. Therefore, the workers of iniquity succeed in keeping them in bondage. A lot of Israelites fight in the flesh, making their efforts against their enemies useless. Israelites love to fight in the flesh. When the Satans rise against them in the beast system, they complain about racism and proceed to march against the injustice, hoping to get results. Black people have been marching for multiple generations. In 2023, they are still marching, trying to overcome the same persecution of racism and discrimination. Stop fighting in the flesh. Fighting in the flesh is Satan fighting against Satan. Can Satan cast out Satan? And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? Satan cannot cast out Satan. Israelites, operating in the flesh gets you nowhere. That is why black people have been going around in circles. Instead of fighting flesh, you have to fight the spirit and power that you cannot see with the eyes of the flesh. However, the Most High give you the ability to see these wicked powers tormenting you in the spirit realm. This is why you must pay attention to the spiritual insight given to you in the spirit realm. Slandering and attacking a person will get you nowhere. The unclean spirit will leave that person to find someone else to persecute you through. That is why you attack the spirit and dark powers that is using the person that is coming against you. Israelites, if you can comprehend this, you will achieve more victories against your enemies. Fighting in the flesh will leave you frustrated. The scripture said you cannot please the most high in the flesh. All who fight in the flesh is not doing the will of the most high, but the will of the Satan's. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. I will show you how unclean spirits attach themselves to you undetected. Covenants are important. Without a covenant, the Satans cannot touch you. That is why you have to be careful not to forge evil covenants. The Most High said, make no covenants with them and with their gods. Because many people lack knowledge about the spirit realm, they have no idea they are forging covenants with their enemies and unclean spirits in the spirit realm. A lot of people cannot maintain their deliverance because they don't know that they are reestablishing evil covenants in the spirit realm. The Satans, witches, warlocks, or any worker of iniquity will send unclean spirits to forge covenants with you in the spirit realm. In order for the workers of iniquity to control you, they must establish the covenant. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men, that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Because ye have said, We have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. In the spirit realm, the unclean spirits will appear to you in multiple ways, in the form of animals and familiar faces. A lot of people, when they see familiar faces, automatically believe that is their loved ones communicating with them. Not so. Whosoever face you're seeing is not that person. It's an unclean masquerading spirit pretending to be your loved one to gain your trust. Once you believe the masquerading spirit is your loved one, most people dismiss the dream and do nothing once they wake up. This is how a lot of Israelites are perishing and forging evil covenants unknowingly in the spirit realm. I repeatedly say you must cancel evil covenants the moment you wake up. 
The reason you must cancel the evil covenants right away, if you wait, you will forget. If you don't cancel the covenant, you establish a covenant with whatever spirit masquerading itself as your loved one. When King Saul went to consult the woman with a familiar spirit, she brought up a masquerading spirit that took on the likeness of Samuel to deceive King Saul. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid. For what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. And he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. The scriptures made it very clear not to have anything to do with a person who have a familiar spirit. Such individual will defile you. The number one way Israelites and indigenous black people forge evil covenants in the spirit realm is when you wake up and do nothing. You don't seek the father about what you saw. You just go about your day as if nothing happened. The workers of iniquity successfully deceive you into believing your dreams mean nothing. If the masquerading spirit was the spirit of death, infirmity, poverty, backwardness, fornication, and etc., that spirit now have the right to operate in your life because it successfully established a covenant with you. The Most High will honor the covenant. This is one way a lot of Israelites are perishing from a lack of knowledge. The time has come for you to stop rejecting knowledge. The scriptures did say in the last days, many will reject the truth. But the time will come when they will not endure sounder doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Israelites, you can fast and pray against the spirit and the spirit will flee from you. Unclean spirits and the entire kingdom of darkness cannot tolerate the word of the most high. They must flee. After a successful prayer and fasting, you will find temporary relief. However, when the spirit returned with other spirits more wicked than itself, it will successfully overcome you if you don't reject and cancel the covenant. The scriptures made it known that the devil will return and the unclean spirit won't return alone. If you still lack knowledge when the devil return, the unclean spirit will successfully overpower you. That is how many people return to bondage and their deliverance reverse. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. When a person is battling an unclean spirit in the form of addiction, the individual takes the appropriate steps to become clean. After a long battle, the person overcome their addiction for several years. Then suddenly the person relapsed. The unclean spirit returned with other spirits more wicked than itself and placed a stronger hold on that person. When the unclean spirit know that you are aware of his presence in your life, also when the satans and the workers of iniquity know that you're knowledgeable about the spirit realm, your dreams will become complicated and the unclean spirits will cause everything to fall apart in your life to deceive you into believing you lost the battle. The satans and the workers of iniquity will use the spirit of confusion to complicate your dreams to overwhelm you. The satans and the workers of iniquity set traps for you everywhere. How else could they deceive the whole world? And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Spiritual warfare is not a game, which is why you must prepare and be ready to be on the battlefield. Your spiritual journey is beyond religion. The people of the Most High have a lot to learn. Your journey is not only about Messiah. The unseen world is vicious. That is why the Most High said in his words to not look at what is seen, but the unseen. 
Remember the Satan's wage war against Adam and his seed. Just because the Most High said the battle belongs to him, it doesn't mean you sit around and do nothing. Take the time to get to know the Father and his will for your life in the awakening. The awakening is beyond knowing that you're an Israelite. How many times do you need to hear that you're the true descendants of the Israelites? The time has come for you to go deeper with the Most High. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The Satans are making sure you don't wake up to the truth. They want you to continue to uphold their doctrines. Their doctrines and everything about religion and the beast culture is warfare. Spiritual warfare is a continuous battle. That is why I say you were born on a battlefield. The only way you will win the battle is if the Most High is on your side. You can't have the help of the Father if you made an idol your God. Other ways the Israelites and indigenous black people are forging covenants with unclean spirits when you mistake the unclean spirits for emotions and personality. Presently, the beast system is infested with diabolical marine spirits. These devils are running rampant all over the world. The scriptures did say that Babylon, the mother harlot, is a habitation of devils and for all unclean spirits. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. By now, everyone should know the identity of the mother harlot. A lot of people are mistaking the unclean marine spirits for sexual orientation in the beast culture. Marine spirits are responsible for all sexual sins. Since Obama's presidency, there was an increase of marine spirits infesting the beast culture. The heathens' legislations gave these spirits permission to possess many on a national level. The individuals who follow their leaders and their statutes invite the marine spirits into their life on a personal level. The workers of iniquity are trying to convince the people that everyone who are struggling with their sexual orientation is normal because you can choose how you want to identify. The workers of iniquity will never tell the people it's an unclean marine spirit controlling them. The workers of iniquity tell the people it's natural, despite the scriptures speaking against the abomination of lusting after strange flesh. Israelites, how can your God be the same God with the beast culture? You should have nothing in common with the beast system and their religion. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Every emotion and personality are spirits. When you're angry, that is the spirit of anger tempting you. When you're depressed, that is a spirit. If you're fearful, that is a spirit. If you're happy, that is a spirit. If you're lustful, that is a spirit. If you're envious and jealous, both are spirits. These spirits open the door to bigger devils to enter your life. When you're overwhelmed with these spirits, many people mistake these spirits for emotions and dismiss the covenant. It is a spirit that makes you feel the way you do. No one is born angry or jealous. The spirit of anger and jealousy have a stronghold on the person that makes them become that way. The same with whoremongers and prostitutes. Both have a marine spirit of lust and fornication making them promiscuous. A lot of people mistake unclean spirits for emotions and they don't properly deal with these spirits. When they don't reject the unclean spirit, a covenant is forged, giving the unclean spirit permission to operate in your life. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Israelites, you must know the Father. The worst thing you can do is to engage in spiritual warfare and not have the support of the Father. The Satans will destroy you. 
You only have power over the kingdom of darkness if you serve the father. Until you disown the gods of Rome, you will lose every battle. Their God are not your God. Give them back Jesus in all imitations of him. When you refuse to take your place and allow the heathens to lead you, you're forging covenants with the Satans unknowingly. Remember, Satan now is the God of this world. Whatever laws and statutes they come up with, when you comply, you made a covenant with the beast culture. Israelites, it is important to take your place. You may live in this world, but you're not of this world. The Most High call his people to live a set apart life. Take back your household and community from the beast culture. Can two walk together unless they agree? Can two walk together except they be agreed? A lot of Israelites and indigenous black people are focused on Messiah and their lost identity. Many turn a blind eye to the invisible enemy that surrounds them. The time has come for all Israelites to mature. The days are getting evil and you must know the devices your enemies use against you. Make sure that you're covered in all areas. The Satans and the workers of iniquity are waiting for you to give them an opportunity. They will capitalize on every opportunity you give to them. The scripture says Satan prowls around looking for who he can devour. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Israelites, do not let it be you, Satan, found to devour at such a time like this. You're in the awakening for a reason. The Most High wake you up to give you knowledge to save your life. Don't dismiss the truth the Most High is revealing in the awakening. Spiritual warfare is real. The Satans wage war against you every day. Today, you learn about the hidden covenants established with the unclean spirits in the spirit realm as well as the physical realm. Don't forget to break those covenants by asking the Father to help you. Israelites, the truth shall make you free. The Most High did not give us the spirit of bondage. Too many Israelites are comfortable in bondage. When the Most High deliver you from bondage, make sure that you are properly equipped to maintain your deliverance. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me, and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting.